solution process between Öcalan, the Kurdish movement, and between the Turkish government and the Turkish state. The AKP government, the Turkish government, who are the, the party who are in power now, are a, um, a kind of religious nationalist conservative party. Now a lot of people are, have question marks in their minds about how the PKK or how a, a socialist movement like the PKK can actually sit down and negotiate with an organization, with a movement, with a, with a party like the AKP who are nationalist, religious, Sunni Turkish, you know, uh, they have a Sunni Turkish paradigm, a neo-Ottoman paradigm. How can you sit and negotiate or actually think that you're going to make peace with them? What people don't understand is we're making peace to stop the present war, the war with arms, the war with weapons, the war with planes. What we're not doing is we're not saying the political struggle is not going to carry on. Because we're at the negotiation table, we are fighting with the AKP to create a safe haven for our system. So democratic autonomy within Turkey. And we're not just saying we want democratic autonomy for the Kurdish areas. We're saying we want Turkey to be split, split up into 20 autonomous regions. So the whole of Turkey. Now, obviously, we only get about, you know, 8, 9, 10% of the vote in Turkey. This is mainly from Kurds and Turkish revolutionaries. Now, 10% of the vote, 9% of the vote, equates to about um, 4, 3.54 million people. This means that there are 3.54 million people within that system who can organize and create the system that we're talking about now within the system that already exists. The revolution isn't tomorrow, the revolution is now. The revolution is today. The revolution is ongoing. It's a continual process. Now, what we're trying to do with the AKP is trying to stop the war so that we can also win the hearts and minds of the people who are our enemies because we are fighting a war against the Turkish state, namely the Turkish people. You know, the Turkish people who aren't revolutionaries or socialists or communists. So we're engaged in a peace process or a solution process for the Kurdish issue along democratic autonomous lines. And we're saying to the system, which is represented by the AKP government and Erdogan, we will recognize your state and the system, your capitalist system, your neoliberal system, as long and as far as you respect and, and accept ours and recognize ours. Now, they're not willing to do this. That's why they have been waiting for Kobani to fall for the past two years and especially for the past month. They have been waiting, they have been expecting Kobani to fall within the first three weeks they were expecting it to fall. The US, the other Kurdish parties who were waiting on the sidelines like scarecrows, you know, to come and pick at the, the people who were left there to say to them, look, the PKK, the PYD, the YPG couldn't succeed in this, the system that they're trying to create. We have strong allies, we have the uh, Americans, we have the, uh, the British governments behind us, we have the French, we have the EU, and we have Turkey. And what we're going to create here is a system which is, you know, patriarchal, capitalistic, and, you know, just a system, a, a Kurdistan, which is going to be an extension of, every, you know, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. That's, that's, that's what they wanted to create. They wanted to create you know, a system which was going to protect the interests of the elites around the world. Kobani didn't fall, and this is why the Kobani resistance is important. It's not just, you know, to be honest, there are a, maybe a few hundred or, or a thousand civilians left in Kobani. The people there have arms, even the civilians have arms. Now, they're, they're human beings as well, they're fighting ISIS. You know, I could come here or go somewhere else and, you know, use scare tactics, you know, ISIS, they're, they're bar or barbarians, they're, you know, they're, they're not human beings. Fine, you know, they are, you know, they, they are barbaric with, with what they've done. But the reason why ISIS are there and the reason why they have turned their attention to this one little place, which for them apparently has no strategic importance as well, and the same, it's the same reason why the Americans have been doing airdrops and why they've been doing aerial bombings, it's because the Americans don't want to lose face and ISIS know that if this alternative takes root there, 
then the whole of the region is going to be changed. They're not going to be able to pass all of their policies. They're not going to be able to recolonize the region once again along sectarian and ethnic lines. Because the, the, uh, the opening paragraph of the Rojava constitution talks about the equality of Kurds, Turkmen, Assyrians, Armenians, Chaldeans, um, uh, Assyrians, Christians, Muslims, Arabs, and these areas all have multiple languages. They all have, in, the, in these um, popular assemblies, every single ethnicity, every single religious group is represented. This is the first time in the Middle East, at least from what I know in, in modern times, that this has happened. Now this is why if Kobani falls, what they're going to do is they're going to spread and try to topple the other two cantons on either side of Kobani. Kobani is the one in the middle. Now this is why this is relevant to all of us here. Because, you know, all of you, you you'll know it better than I do anyway. But the history of this country and the history of this government is based on the exploitation of the Middle East, of Africa, of the Far East. That's what it's based on. And if they continue to do it, then they'll continue sending soldiers. They'll continue exploiting the oil. They'll continue meddling and drawing um, borders in the region. They'll continue with all of this. And in this country, we'll be the ones who are, who are paying for it because we'll be the ones who are, who are facing, I know, they're gonna pass you know, terrorism laws against ISIS, but the PKK is also on the terrorist list. So I'm going to be the person who's going to be facing those terrorist laws every time I you know, enter uh, or, or leave this country. We know this, but what that revolution represents now in Rojava, and the reason why they want it to topple it, the reason why they want it to fall, either from outside by ISIS or from within by using other Kurdish forces, like the forces of the KDP, which they're trying to bring into uh, Kobani at the moment to defend Kobani. They are going to try to destroy, if they can't, subvert this revolution. And it's a true, true people's revolution. It's not a revolution from the top. I have some, I don't know how many anarchists there are here today, um, but we have lots of questions and we have these discussions. One of them is, if Öcalan rejects authority and authoritarianism and state structures, why doesn't he reject his own authority, for example? But what a clear, we don't reject democratic authority. We think authority or hierarchy exists in nature, exists in societies, but this, if it's a democratic authority, it's not hierarchical. It's essentially not hierarchical, it's vertical. Erdogan has been the ideological leader of this movement for the past 40 years. So we know also that these things aren't going to change from one day to another. The Kurdish people haven't just suddenly become anarchists, you know, free thinking, free spirits, who want to do everything communally. Obviously, there are people who are especially men, for example, when it comes to the whole, you know, gender equality, uh, including myself, you know, we want to hold on to, our, to some of our power. We don't want to let it go. We don't want to be equal in everything, you know, or, you know, our cultural hang-ups, our historical hang-ups, which have become almost a part of our hard-coded DNAs, we don't want to let go of these. So it's not black and white. But what it is, is it's well-intentioned, it's honest, it's authentic, it's sincere. It's a revolution along the lines that I've just been explaining and it has a strong history. The Rojava revolution, revolution is three years old from 2011, but it's actually 30 years old because Öcalan stayed in uh, Syria in those areas from 1978 to 1999. So for 21 years he was there. The PKK, all the PKK cadres, all the PKK leaders, uh, the PKK ideologues were there organizing the people. The first uprising happened in 2004. The world didn't care. Assad slaughtered, massacred a few hundred Kurds, displaced about 20,000. Um, and then in 2011, when the um, international coalition attacked the Syrian regime, Assad had uh, 
nothing to do but to leave the Kurds uh, to do what they wanted to do because he wanted to protect the more important, the more strategic areas of, of, um, of Syria. And the Kurds always said, we want a democratic autonomous Kurdistan, but a democratic Syria. So that's what we're saying. Democratic autonomy in Turkey, democratic Turkey. Democratic autonomy in uh, Syria, democratic Syria. Democratic autonomy in Iraq, a democratic Iraq, and democratic autonomy in Iran, and a democratic Iran. Because if these countries don't democratize, they won't recognize our democratic autonomy. So it's a system within a system. Some people say, well, you know, you're just creating another, basically you're creating another state structure, but just not calling it a state. And the reply to that is, if we wanted to create a state structure, we wouldn't be so shy about it. But also, anything that is any sort of authority or institution that is localized automatically will lose its power, its authoritarian power. It will automatically become democratized. Because the people who are taking decisions about what is going on on their street, in their neighborhood, will make the best decision. So democratic autonomy is almost like a um, it's almost like a penicillin or, uh, you know, something um, that is trying to open up the veins of the wider system uh, to accept um, a more democratic society, a more democratic system. Um, I don't know if that's made any sense. It's been a bit all over the place. Um, so any questions, I'd be happy to take. Thank you. Yes. Uh, when I've been like out on the streets talking to people.